All right, Jennifer. New shoes. Brake switch works now. Fresh oil and chain and sprocket. So we are doing good. God, she looks so clean. That ain't gonna last long. They got that done in literally hours. Let's go, Ugh. let's get back on the road. Just leaving Price. That was honestly a great little stay. I'm gonna be on pavement for a minute here, but I basically didn't record anything while I was in Price because all I did was work on editing footage. So I was able to get three videos done just while I was in Price. That was the Legacy Inn and RV Park. So it does have tent spots, it does have RV spots and stuff like that if you're not looking to stay in the motel. But the motel was very inexpensive and I picked it because all of the reviews said that it was very clean considering how inexpensive it was. And they were right, it was in really good shape. Would highly recommend. But yeah, it's 240 miles roughly to Evanston. I'll get gas at Soldier Soldier Summit, something like that. The goal would be to get to Evanston sometime tomorrow afternoon. And it's at this point, it's basically just I'm I'm going north until I finish the route, or I hit snow and stuff that turns me around, and then I'll head over to the northern half of Nevada. And then I'm not sure what Idaho is gonna be like. Everything up north got a ton of snow and I did the math and I have basically 42 days between now and the start of the Dakota 600 and I have roughly 20 days of riding to do to finish Utah, do Nevada, do Idaho, and do Washington. So hopefully that will be enough time to do those routes. It's just gonna come down to whether there's snow or not, really. I have water and food for camping, so I'm not worried about that. There's like a 10 mile diversion off of the course to get gas. Otherwise it's like 240 miles from Wellington to Evanston. So we ain't trying to do that in one trip. <laughs> Could I make it? Probably. Depends on how much gas I burn trying to get through like mud and snow. That's not what we're trying to do. The reason I'm, well, there's two reasons basically why I'm going over and doing the northern half of Nevada. One, it's open and the temperature won't be horrible. And two, it gives more time for stuff to clear. So yeah, here we go. People have gone, yeah, people have chipped at them and stuff. But yeah, you can see more of them right there. Those are really cool. And so these are from, I mean, hell, they could be from 500 years ago. They could be from 3,000 years ago. But yeah, that's neat. I'm gonna take a couple pictures and then uh, get back on the route. So I will catch you later. Okay, let's get onto the dirt. That is cool though. It just shows you though, this is all native land. White people did not discover this. There were already people living here. Nothing will fix that. We can't change the things that were done, you know? We, we can never make that right. The only thing we can try and do is acknowledge what was done and hopefully act differently going forward. You know, I'm in favor for anything that gives native peoples further agency in their lives because that was taken from them. It was taken from their grandparents and everybody else. So anything we can do now 
going forward to give them that agency back should be encouraged. All right, gotta keep an eye out for cows. I did stiffen up the preload in the front just slightly. Uh, I wanted it to try and ride a little bit more like what it was riding like when I didn't have the luggage on it. From my understanding of the route, I'm kind of past the like pretty technical stuff, I think. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna still hit some stuff that's pretty technical, but the stuff up here seems to be pretty chill. Should still be fun. And it should be absolutely beautiful. Hi, pretty painted horses. Hi, guys. That was a snake. It was just a little, like, garter snake or something. Sunning himself. I'm glad I didn't run him over. It's really pretty back here. I'm just going nice and slow. Getting used to the tires. Letting them break in. I will say the, uh... Rally front definitely has enough gap in the lugs to, to pick up rocks and throw them. <laughs> you will definitely throw rocks. I might, basically based on snow, what I may have to do is do northern Nevada and then go over to southern Washington and do Washington south to north because there's less snow on the Washington route than on the Idaho route. And so that would allow me to give another week or so, you know, basically I would be doing Idaho then beginning of July and just give it that much longer to try and clear. Cause there's a lot of snow in Idaho right now, like a lot of snow. I don't think it's gonna be clear in, you know, two weeks when I, when I get there. Hey, pretty guy. Hi. Bear Claw Valley. I like it. I will be bear bagging my food. I am back in bear country for sure. Gone 69 miles since price. Hey -o. <laughs> Now, what's encouraging so far is that I have not even seen snow like back in the trees. That's good. That means I might make it quite a while before I actually see snow. So if I'm not even seeing snow in the trees, and I'm at 9,000 feet, you know, whatever, then that's very encouraging. Because it means that I could probably get to near 10,000 before there would be significant snow and stuff potentially on the roads. Yeah, you can see where this was probably a rutted up mess when it was wet. <laughs> bunk, 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 bunk. More RVs. Yeah, if you can get an RV that size back here, I'm not too worried. You know, I didn't actually look whether or not they put tubeless tires or tubed tires on here. Obviously it has tubes no matter what, because it's not a tubeless bike, but I, generally speaking, I will put tubeless tires on this bike, and it's because you have a stiffer sidewall, and it seems like they just kind of hold their shape a little bit better. I mean, even on the 690, I did the same thing. A lot of times I was running tubeless tires. You get a stronger sidewall, they handle low pressures better. It seems like they don't get flats as easily. It doesn't really matter, but just out of curiosity. Oh, there you go. Sorry, I gotta focus on not riding into one of the ruts. Oof. 55, yeah, it's uh, it feels really good right now, to be honest. Because I'm not moving super fast and I'm off road, so I'm working harder than normal. There's the first snow. All right, so I'm at 9,700 feet, and that's the first time I have seen snow. So, yeah, I think I will be fine until I am approaching 10,000 feet to not have snow on the road.
Oh, not quite 10,000 feet. Can't put the drone up because the wind would slap it right off this ridge. And this, I mean, it, the riding basically from here to the finish should be very similar to this. Damn ruts, man. I keep trying to snag my front wheel. Not today, Satan. I saw a funny thing the other day. I think it was uh, maybe today. Like, what do we say to the god of death? Uh, maybe today? <laughs> Three miles to the turnoff. And basically, Soldier Summit gas is just to get you that little bit of extra range you need to get to Evanston. I could probably do it without it, but it would definitely be close. Yeah, eight miles to gas. Okay, so these Aspens are starting to green up. Cool. Basically, the next area where snow is really a concern is north of Current Creek. Nobody coming. Oof. Oh god. <laughs> That's worse than the dirt road. Eventually. Alright. Get back up here to the route. Those clouds look like I might get rained on. Oh, hi, sheep. I don't want to move, you guys. I want you to get out of the way. God, the noise that they make. Whatever. saying a whole lot right now. I'm really just enjoying the riding. This is a ton of fun. It's, I mean, it's chill. Like, it's really chill riding. There's nothing difficult about this, really. But just look at that view. Mini Creek. <laughs> Was it named by Mini, or is it because it is Mini? God, that is just beautiful. Just a perfect little shelf road. And no gate. Cool. Man, I'm in second now. Yeah, let's just stay there for a minute. Because this appears like it's going to be more technical. Clearly not too many people have been down here this year. You know what, we're gonna go first. Just to keep it nice and slow. Oh yeah, we got ruts. Sorry tree, but I need through there. be a place to see elk and you know everything else but definitely elk like going up this you'd probably be okay because the soil's nice and grippy it feels like so there's definitely some loose bits all I'm really trying to do is not end up down in the lower of the two ravines that would not be fun to ride around in.
So yeah, after Fruitland, I'll start looking for a place to camp. I will look at campgrounds in Fruitland just to see if there are any up here along the route. And the reason a campground would be intriguing is they would probably have bear boxes. Either way, I'm definitely bear bagging the food and having my bear spray in the tent with me. I'm not stupid. <laughs> But yeah, basically all most of the campgrounds around here and even in Colorado and stuff still have bear boxes in the campgrounds because it makes it way easier to safely store food. <laughs> Narrow bridge. Um not exactly. Yeah, that bridge gone. <laughs> wow, that's really pretty. Looks like it flooded recently. <laughs> Looks like, they, uh, they re looks like that was maybe replanting. It's a little too evenly spaced to be natural. But yeah, it looks like they rebuilt this road because of a washout. Oof. Oh, it's solid. Okay, they put concrete there. like swirling. There's some bigger rocks in here too. Oh. Yeah, you can see where this all burned. So I'm sure the flood happened a year or two later as it does. Whew. Yeah, I wonder when all this burned. It burned bad. I mean, it, it sterilized it looks like because these trees are just dead. That's when you know a forest fire is bad, is when several years later the trees haven't even started regrowing. I mean, even the grass in a lot of areas hasn't really come back. Oh, here's the pavement. Okay. Eight miles to Fruitland. I will see you there, I guess. Later. So I was able to check the map, and there is camping at Current Creek Reservoir, which is not terribly far away. So the plan for right now is just get up to Current Creek Res Reservoir, find a spot, camp up. Fruitland's little uh, convenience store slash whatever that was, was popping, man. God, I walked in, there was probably 50 people in there. I mean, granted, it's probably the only place around here where you can really get gas and, you know, like some food and stuff. But, geez. God, this is beautiful back here. Wow. And there's actually water. It's just shocking, considering how dry everywhere else I have been this trip has been. 14 miles. This has to go to dirt at some point, right? And here's dirt. Okay. Oh god, and washboard. Hopefully it's not too bad. I've been really pretty impressed with Utah's roads. Other than the couple of areas right around Moab, which are just super busy. There hasn't really been much in the way of washboard roads. Most of the roads like this have been in really good shape. <laughs> After I just got done talking about how nice the roads have been in Utah. Ugh. Ugh, really? Well, guess not. Why would that not be open yet? Like, Memorial Day weekend is like the weekend to open this stuff. I have no idea if this keeps going up or if I start going down here soon. Like, I have no idea. I mean, I can't keep going up too much further. I'm nearly at the top. Which is kind of the only reason why I'm still going on this because I already know I'm fairly near the top and so I should come over here and start going down a little bit. So pretty. I mean, it's still only 3.30. Like, I got plenty of time. 
it's not a big deal if I go a little further. Here's the first snow. I'm right about 9,000 feet in the shadows. Yeah, here's snow. Okay, I think the top is like right over here. Okay, there's a little bit of snow on the road over here. But it looks like I have paths. So we're just gonna take this nice and easy all the way through. And that was right at 9,700 feet. Let's take the high line here. Definitely been some fairly large vehicles that have come through. And this stuff, I mean, I can literally just like walk almost. As long as there is a path to follow, that's all I need. Okay, there's one more big snow drift after this, it looks like. Oh yeah, I might be going, yeah, I'm gonna be going around. <laughs> Sorry, but I ain't doing that. Ah, it. I go right through here. What are we looking like? That's not too bad. It's muddy, but it's in pretty good shape. Okay, so that's a nope. I ain't plowing a path through that. There's nowhere to go through. I'll just sink. All right, we're gonna turn around. But yeah, there you go. This is the uh, current Creek Pass. On a four by four, you can do it for sure. On, if you had several friends, you could probably do it, but not by myself but yeah basically I'm fine until 10,000 feet and then it goes and now I gotta go all the way back down there And yeah, I mean, there's no way to get through that. Like, I could take all the luggage off and try and walk the bike through, but all I would probably do is dig a hole. <laughs> Whew. Yeah. If you had five guys, you could get your bikes through. You might have to take all the luggage off if they're a big bike. Five guys willing to make the effort at the beginning of the day or something, you could get the bikes through. What if I could do that? Connect over to US 40 on whatever this road is coming up. Because it looks like I'm gonna have to do 40 to reconnect to the route. And it would save me going back down washboard gravel hell for 20 more miles. Yeah, we're gonna do that. All right, I am going straight. We'll see where this road goes. It goes straight down to 40, so. I'd like to at least maybe get under 8,000 feet just so that it's a little bit more comfortable overnight. Stuff like this is why you do not pass the opportunity to get gas on a BDR. Because I have no idea how much shorter or longer this is going to make my trip to Evanston. Alright, so I'm going to get down here. I'm going to pull over and see what my options might be. Alright. 
I will see you when I see you. Welcome to the Lodgepole Campground. And we're gonna see what we got. That's a double sight, I don't want that. I could do that though. All right, I'm gonna drop a couple of little things. Oh God, just to mark it as mine and then go pay.